Around the conception of the interstate system, the idea of divided highways connecting the U.S. was a grand idea. It would help long-distance travel and get people where they want to be in the most efficient manner possible. But as time went on, support for freeways in America has dwindled. Freeway revolts and overall distaste towards the impact these highways create has caused construction to slow. People have started to realize and turn on the more confusing projects and pointless freeways. This brings us to I-794 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the target of a lot of attention right now. This highway has affected the downtown of this city in a major way, disconnecting major neighborhoods and leading to basically nowhere. So today we're going to talk about why it's there and its important plan for the future. Before this video starts though, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We make content like this every week. So if you haven't already subscribed and you're enjoying the content, I highly recommend because it helps me out a ton and I really appreciate it. Thank you. So let's take a step back and give an overview of our highway, Interstate 794, also known as the Lake Freeway. It's a 3.75 mile interstate located at the south border of Milwaukee's Central Business District. It starts at the Marquette Interchange, a large interchange with I-94 and I-43, serving as the spur from those two highways into the downtown. From there, it moves across the Milwaukee River and into the downtown, where it serves as a sort of border between the CBD and the historic Third Ward. It then takes a quick turn to the south before disconnecting the waterfront from the Third Ward. On this waterfront is the grounds of Summerfest, the largest music festival in the world. Moving on, it goes over the Milwaukee Harbor and the Kinnikinnick River on the Hone Bridge, a towering bridge and one of the most notable road landmarks in the city. Next, it continues on the waterfront before turning away from the lakeshore. At this point, the highway loses its interstate status and becomes State Route 794 and the Lake Parkway as it continues through southern Milwaukee. Going through Bayview and St. Francis, it works its way towards the Mitchell International Airport, where it then takes a sudden turn to the east directly next to it, and ends at an intersection with Pennsylvania Avenue. Now this is a pretty confusing ending, as anyone would expect from such a confusing highway. It's interesting because I'm sure anybody paying attention that knows what's going on here can tell me all the different problems, but they aren't necessarily out in the open. I'll explain that more in detail in a bit, but let's go to the history here to get some clarity on what's going on. So if we move back to the 1940s and 50s, freeways were the next big thing, and everybody wanted them. On the north side of the downtown, the Park East Freeway was partially constructed, with a plan for it to extend to near the edge of the lakeshore. With this design, the Lake Freeway would start there, and work its way south along the east edge of the downtown. But that design was scrapped with the freeway removal policy and the Park East Freeway was scrapped as well. With this design, 794 could have gone as far down as Chicago, serving as a lakeside route to the cities of Cudahy, Racine, Kenosha, Waukegan, and into Evanston. It was bold, but there were even parts constructed on US-41 in Illinois, with Lakeshore Drive meant to be the southern end. Anyways, with freeway revolts putting a stop to that, the next plan was for it to extend down to the Milwaukee International Airport as a freeway, serving as connection to the downtown. But yet again, the Hone Bridge was the only part of this built before opposition to the freeway forced it to be canceled. This meant the large bridge over the harbor served no real purpose. In 1977, though, it was connected to the East-West Freeway. Moving to the 1990s, construction on the Lake Parkway was started and continued for around 10 years. This parkway was built as a sort of freeway, having one at-grade intersection on its entire length this weird traffic light thing. This was one of the main reasons it's not just considered an interstate for its entire length. So now in its current state, we have this highway. Now there are some pretty major problems, and it's not difficult to see why it was such a terrible highway. First, it's basically just a massive wall, disconnecting the city. So it runs at the south end of the downtown, stopping development and forcing itself into becoming a border for the CBD. It serves as a large barrier between two of the city's flagship neighborhoods, with the historic Third Ward being completely disconnected from everything by the highway. Summerfest is disconnected from the rest of the city by the large viaduct, and it continues to mess with development all around the area south of the downtown. As well as that, it just doesn't go anywhere important. The full route does go to the airport, but the interstate just ends in the residential areas of the Bayview neighborhood, and the interstate from the bridge to its terminus is almost eerie feeling like a very weird spot to drive. All this together resulted in talks to remove the parts of the interstate within the downtown and replace them with something that would work better there. 
The talk started in 1995, with the cited reason being the cutting off of the historic Third Ward. But the effort failed due to suburban opposition, with increased traffic volumes on the road being the main problem. But cutting to more recent times, the highway doesn't serve as much of a purpose, and the city believes they could remove it without severe impact on the city's traffic. This issue has become much more mainstream, and recently the city decided an alternative was required. So in June of 2023, an open house presented several alternatives from the Wisconsin DOT on either repairing the freeway or replacing it with ad-grade streets between the Hone Bridge and the Milwaukee River. There's still a lot of controversy on how this would affect the traffic of the city, with the idea of fully getting rid of the, the freeway being risky, because it would move a lot of traffic onto the city streets, which is why there are so many different plans for what could happen. The DOT released seven different plans, but there are three main ideas that we can go through now. The first plan would be the total removal of the highway. In this plan, I-794 would connect into Clybourne Street around 6th Street and continue on that road until Lincoln Memorial Drive. Lincoln Memorial would then be the connection onto the home bridge, continuing south before turning back into a freeway, with there being no real point in getting rid of the bridge. Now this plan would require Clybourne Street to be widened into a boulevard, as it's currently a one-way street running parallel to the highway. Traffic from the freeway and the Marquette Interchange would run directly onto the road after the Milwaukee River, which would be a lot of to handle. But the hope is that it could handle the traffic it sees, and the rest of the vehicles would spread out more around the downtown. This plan would clear up 18 acres of new land for redevelopment and reconnect the historic third ward to the rest of the city. The next plan would be to keep the freeway in the city, instead replacing different sections in the eastern portion of the highway that haven't been touched since 1974. This would maintain the existing design and current alignment, but bring it back up to modern standards and keep it safe. The final concept type would be to keep the freeway, but fixing the off-ramps to improve safety and limit impact. In this design, there would be just two spots to get on and off the highway, basically making it simpler than before. This would free up about 8 acres of land for new developments while keeping the freeway as is, limiting traffic effects as much as possible. Within this plan, they could also tighten the lane separation on the freeway, further reducing impact to the highway while keeping it intact. Currently, the most commonly talked about design would be the first one, because a lot of people in Milwaukee want I-794 gone, but it would be a major change for the city and would still be a very controversial idea. The study schedule is for public meetings and involvement to continue through 2024, with alternative development and analysis working through the first half of 2024. Environmental analysis has started recently and will also continue into 2024. The Wisconsin DOT hopes to have the final design ready by 2026, with construction starting soon after, anywhere from 2027 to 2030. This is all pending funding availability, but something will happen with this highway to nowhere, and soon. This is happening all around the country, with highways being torn down in places where the public has deemed they don't belong. It'll be interesting to see if this is a popular shift or just a far off idea in a lot of cities. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week Bryson, Sturfels, Karen Hudson81, Jeremy McCall, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, KMS162, Jeremy Jarvis, Christopher DeAngelis, JL Darkburn, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolflink73, Snyder Schwein, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, and Hazev the Wolf. I'm thinking of uploading content about a day earlier or whenever I get it done for members. So if that's something that interests you, you can become a member by clicking the link down in the description below as well as clicking the subscribe button. Any money for this just goes straight into my savings. So if you want to help me out as a person and you appreciate the content, this is the best way to do it. Thank you.